Lord Jesus, we love you so much, Lord. And those words seem so small, not enough, but Lord, we do, we love you. We lay down our lives and our hearts tonight. We just praise you and we thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Help us to be able to honor you.
let your glory follow let your presence overwhelm us take us away to be with you Lord, as we enter
worship you, O Lord. We worship you for who you are. We praise your holy name, Jesus. We praise your holy name, God. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Almighty God, we praise you. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise your name, Jesus. We praise the name of the Lord Most High. King Jesus. King Jesus, we glorify your name. We lift you high, Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, Jesus. 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 The name above every name. The name above every name. Oh, Jesus.
everyone in the house tonight, just begin to open your, your mouth and just begin to praise him. Praise your name, Jesus. 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 You are worthy, Jesus. There is none like you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Jesus, you are the Lion of Judah, Prince of Peace. And we praise you and we worship you. And we glorify your name, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Jesus, you alone are worthy of our praise. You alone are worthy. You hung on that tree for us, Jesus. You hung on that tree for us, Lord. You made a decision to do that. You could have walked away at any point, but you decided to obey the Father's will. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving us that much that you were willing to be punished the way you were. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
We owe you all, Lord Jesus. We owe you all. And we give you the glory this night. And Lord, we just thank you that we have an opportunity to come here tonight to be in your presence. It is always so sweet. And we have an opportunity, Lord, to spend some time with each other, which is also very sweet. Thank you for this family, Lord. I thank you for this family. And I just thank you, Lord. We're on this path together. And that we will not be happy as we walk this path until we pull every sin-natured person out of the depths of hell, out of the, out of the enemy's kingdom. That is where our true joy is. That is where our true joy is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the church said, Amen. Find a brother, find a sister. Let them know that you are glad they are here. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul, and all as that is within me. You know what? That, that course would be good right now. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Yeah. I love these things. <laughs> Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Yeah, that one. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hold on one second. I'm going to have to get it out. I don't know that's my heart. I will worship his holy name. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jamie. Praise you, Lord. Did I drop something? It's probably part of this. Yes, it is. Well, this is going to be in my pocket for a while. There are some songs that Jamie has introduced us to that just touch me in, a, in just a very special way, and that's one of them. That's one of them. Um, I want to thank Brother Alate tonight because his message on Sunday morning was nice and it was short. And so, you know, I kind of feel the need to fill up the time that he left available. That was Sunday. Like I said, Sunday night, that was a great message. It really was. And I have still been thinking about that. Uh, tonight, and Cindy, if you will help me, we talked about a little bit about peace on, on Sunday night, and the Lord still has me thinking about peace. And we're going to start and be in Genesis 41. 
and it's a record that we're all very familiar with. Pharaoh has a dream, and he needs someone to interpret that dream. I think one of the reasons that this whole issue of peace has been laying on me so heavily is because there seems to be so much lacking of peace in the body of Christ right now. And I know part of that is with the presidential elections coming up. But what the presidential election does only magnifies what's already there. That's all, it, that's all it's doing. The unrest, the lack of peace, it's just being magnified. And so one of the things that I hope I am able to communicate tonight is that for us as sons and daughters of God, peace is a decision. It's a decision. Because, and I'm getting ahead of myself in my notes, of course, and I typically do that. When we were born again, everything that we needed to have a peaceful life was deposited into us. Amen. We already have it in us. We have to start accessing it. We have to start accessing it, okay? And the story about Pharaoh plays a role in how I want to present that tonight. So in Genesis chapter 41, Pharaoh has a dream, and the way he tells the dream in the first few verses of 41 are different than the way he tells the dream starting in verse 17. So in verse 14 is where we're going to pick it up. The baker has, the butler has told Pharaoh that when he was in prison two, a couple of years ago, he met a man there who interpreted his dream and the dream of the baker, and both of the dreams came true. And so he said, maybe this guy can interpret your dream too. And so Pharaoh sends for Joseph, and so Joseph is in prison, and before he meets Pharaoh, he cleans himself up, he shaves, you know, takes a, takes a shower, puts on a you know brand new Amani suit, and uh, <laughs> and then he goes into the court of Pharaoh, and uh, so in verse in verse fifteen, it says, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it, and I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream and a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. What did Pharaoh want? He wanted someone to, to interpret the dream for him. That's what he wanted. He did not realize that the interpretation of the dream was going to also include peace as part of it, okay? The thing that is interesting to me about this as, as where we are so far, Joseph walks up to Pharaoh and says, God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Joseph knew his God, and he knew how to hear his God. Joseph had a sin nature, ladies and gentlemen. We have God's life in nature. And sometimes many of us, we don't know God is talking to us. We can't hear him. And he's talking, but we have not learned to hear him. Joseph had learned to hear God speak to him. Okay? God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. In the Hebrew culture, peace described a person's coming and going. In other words, peace was used to describe a person's lifestyle. That's very important. Peace described the person's lifestyle. Okay? So if I was to walk up to Jamie, I would say, Jamie, how is your peace? Today, that would be, how are you doing? How are you today? How is your peace? F 
for us as sons and daughters of God, we should only have one answer. It's there. My peace is here. My peace goes with me everywhere I go. Okay? In verse 17, Okay, a person's lifestyle. If peace is not where you live, it's on you. If peace is not where you live, it is on you. Because Jesus has given you that peace. He deposited it on the inside of you. And if that is not where you live, then that tells you a lot about your relationship with Jesus. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? That tells you a lot about your relationship. And what it tells me is that you need work. You need to work on that relationship. Because, see, if your life is not peace all the time, then you need to work on that relationship. Because, see, there is nothing in this world that should affect your peace. Nothing. Nothing. Okay? Look at verse 17. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat flesh, well favored, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill favored and lean flesh, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt. For badness. And the lean and the ill favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill favored as, as at the beginning, so I woke, so I awoke. So you had the seven fat calf cows, you have the seven lean, the seven lean eat the fat the seven fat, but they still look lean. Okay? Verse 22, and I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears, not these, okay, not these. Come on, y'all, work with me. <laughs> work with me. <laughs> and seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good, and seven ears withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured, devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it unto me. Joseph said in verse 25 unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath shown Pharaoh what, is a, what he is about to do. Okay? Now, so, so we have seven years of great plenty. Okay? And then, what's, well, no, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's read this. And the seven, the seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. The seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Okay? So we see that there are going to be seven years of great plenty and seven years of famine. And the seven years of famine are going to be so bad that people are going to forget about the seven years of plenty. And the seven years of plenty, ladies and gentlemen, are, I mean, you're talking about plenty. Plenty. I mean, it's unimaginable how plentiful it's going to be. But after that seven years, and then you get the next seven years, it's going to be like, we don't even remember how good we had it. 
an answer of peace, and this is, I want you to see this, did not stop the seven years of famine. Do you see this? The answer of peace that Joseph says Pharaoh was going to receive, it did not stop the seven years of famine. So how then is this an answer of peace if it did not stop the famine? Go back to verse 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The answer of peace partly is knowing what is about to happen. So an answer of peace was knowing what Egypt will face the next 14 years. That was the answer of peace. An answer of peace also includes instruction for the seven plenteous years and instruction for the seven years of famine. Now, I want you to think about this. Pharaoh is listening to Joseph give the interpretation of his dream. Pharaoh heard Joseph says, I'm going to give you an answer of peace. Okay? So Pharaoh's, he's sitting there, okay, this is going to work out all right. This is going to be fine. We're going to get an answer of peace here. So Joseph starts talking about the seven plenteous years. And Pharaoh says, yeah, okay, okay, we're going, to, we're going to get through this. And then he gets to the seven years where you would have forgotten all about the seven years of plenty. I can just see Pharaoh looking at his wise men, looking at his advisors. I can just see him in his mind. We ain't going to make this. We, we're not going to survive this. If this, is bad, if this is as bad as he says it is, we are not going to survive this. The neat thing about what happens is not only did God let Pharaoh know what was coming, God told Pharaoh how to deal with it. Listen to it. Listen to it. God let Pharaoh know what was coming. God told Pharaoh how to deal with it. Okay? For many of us, in our way of thinking, an answer of peace is an answer that means an absence of hardship or suffering. We don't see that here in this, in this record. For many of us, an answer of peace is our getting what we want. Isn't that what the church is today? An answer of peace for, for us, for the church, is getting what we want. The answer of peace, ladies and gentlemen, is this. The answer of peace was the wisdom that Pharaoh would need to properly lead Egypt during the coming crisis. That was the answer of peace, the wisdom to get through this. I'm going to say it one more time. The wisdom to get through it. Yea, through our walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am not fearing any evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In other words, there are going to be valleys that I'm going to have to walk through. But I am not fearing any evil. You see this? Okay. Look at verse 32. So Pharaoh then says, oh, well, Joseph said, for the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because this thing shall be established by God, and God will surely bring it to pass. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, set him over the land of Egypt, let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers, blah, 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 blah. He tells him to do all of this. Then in verse 37, the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a man, such a one as this, a man in whom the spirit of God is. Isn't that neat? a man in whom the Spirit of God is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we know that Joseph did not have the Spirit of God in him. Okay? Joseph 
had a sin nature, so the Spirit of God could not be in him. But his relationship with God was such he could hear God and get God's wisdom. Now, the point I want to make, a man in whom the Spirit of God is, who is that describing? Us. Us. We have the Spirit of God in us. That is what Pharaoh is, that is who Pharaoh is describing. He's describing us. We have the Spirit of God in us. Our answer of peace is in our new born again nature. That's where our answer of peace lies, in our new born again nature. We have access to all the wisdom we need for any situation. Look in John chapter 14. And we won't be coming back to Egypt. But I wanted you to see that in John chapter 14. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's hot in Egypt. <laughs> in verse 27, the Bible says, peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. And not only does Jesus leave peace, what kind of peace does he leave? His peace. He says, I'm leaving you my peace. Now, I want you to think about the peace that this man walked in when you read the Gospels. Think about the peace he walked in. And see, when you walk in peace, there is nothing the enemy of the soul can throw at you that's going to change that. But see, Jesus had one thing going for him that many of us are still trying to get to. He had a relationship with God that was seamless. When you saw Jesus, you saw God. And see, right now, when you see Barry, you're not seeing God. Barry has work to do. He has work to do. And that's okay. I recognize that. I recognize that. But I want to get to the place where my relationship with my Heavenly Father is as seamless as Jesus' relationship was and is with his Heavenly Father. So Jesus says, My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, if Jesus gives us something, is that enough? Is that enough? No, it's not. Jesus can give it, but you got to take it. <laughs> you got to take it. You got to take it. <laughs> and see, we haven't been taking what he's been giving us. Jesus has given us the peace, and we have the peace. At the same place that we have the, the dust-covered Bible, we have the peace. Okay? And so we haven't taken, we haven't taken what Jesus has given us. And see, when Jesus gives us peace, there's, there's something that comes along with it. Look at verse 26. But the comforter, which the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. What have I just described? Wisdom. Wisdom. I have just described wisdom. Because that peace in verse 27 is a quietness. It's a rest. A quietness and a rest. That is what Jesus has given us. And why do we have that quietness and that rest? Because we are sons and daughters of God. Everything God is resides in us. Everything. We don't lack anything. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 says, Ye are complete in him. 
That word complete, means, it means you are filled to the brim with everything God can possibly give you. And if you are complete in him, then peace is part of that completeness. Look in James chapter 1. Because we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us, because we have that peace that he has given us, we can do something that a person who is not born again cannot do. In verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give us to all liberally and upbraid us not, and it shall be given him. How does God give the wisdom? Through that born-again nature that we have on the inside of us. Remember, the, the, the carnal mind cannot grasp or understand the things of God. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Your Born again nature contains the peace. The peace that you need to access the wisdom when you need it. Okay? Proverbs chapter 3. In Proverbs chapter 3, look at verse 13. Still talking about wisdom. Verse 13, it says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. And you're probably sitting here thinking, okay, Barry, I understand how when we're born again, we have peace already within us. And I understand this whole issue about wisdom. I understand that. But um, there seems to be a little disconnect. We're going to connect some things, okay? Look in Jeremiah chapter 29 a verse that you're all familiar with. Matter of fact, I want to read that one out of the Amplified. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says, well, i to find it first. Verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, peace, and not, and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome, to give you hope in your final outcome. But the thing that strikes me whenever I read this is thoughts of peace, peace. Dave, Brother Pastor Dave makes a statement when he, he has a series called Peace, the, the Aggressive Weapon. Yeah. But, in, but in that series, he says that a, a man or woman who is walking in godly peace is unmanageable by Satan. It's unmanageable by Satan. Okay. God can give you an answer of peace about your future that Satan on his best day cannot derail. And it starts by believing when, G, when believing Jesus when he says, "Peace I leave with you." So he has left the peace with us that we need. And the reason he's, he has left us the peace that we need, because that is what we're going to need to hear the voice of the new nature. That's, that's what we need. We need to have peace in order to hear the mind of Christ for whatever situation you're dealing with. You have to have peace to hear it. When we get to the point in our lives when what people say or do does not determine how we respond. We are walking in the peace Jesus has deposited into each one of us. Satan will do everything he can to keep us agitated, on edge, off balance, and out of sorts. I don't know if many of you have 
heard the phrase out of source. You may have. Okay. He knows that a quiet mind lives in victory because it listens, it listens to and follows the leading of the new nature. And I think you have in your notes 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 12, where he talks about the Lord was not in the, 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 the high winds. He was not in the loud noise of the, of the storm. He was in that still, small voice. So you have to get quiet to hear that still, small voice. And that still, small voice for us is the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16, verse 13. The last verse we're going to read. And I want to read it from the Amplified. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth is, giving spirit comes he will guide you into all truth the whole full truth for he will not speak his own message on his own authority but he will tell whatever he hears from the father he will give the message that has been given to him and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future that will happen in the future. My point tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is when you are walking in peace, you are really not concerned about what is going to happen because you want to seek the Lord's face to find out what do you need to do when it happens. And see, that's where the peace comes in. You will have a plan that the Lord has given you to deal with whatever comes. He will give you the wisdom to, quote, unquote, ride this out. Ride out whatever situation is. He will give you the wisdom to do so. But you have to pick up the peace, P-E-A-C-E, that Jesus has given us. You have to go get it. You have to get, see, we have a lot of things that Jesus paid the price for on the cross that are, that are available to us. They're not automatic, ladies and gentlemen. They're not automatic. I mean, if, if they were automatic, then spiritual maturity wouldn't matter. Changing how you live wouldn't matter if they were automatic. But if you want to walk in the peace, receive the wisdom that's available, you will have to do something different. I want to suggest something to you tonight. You want to start walking in that peace that Jesus has given us? Dramatically increase your private worship. Ramp it up. Ramp it up dramatically increase your private worship. You will be amazed at the peace that comes when you worship. The emotions get pushed aside. The negative thoughts of the enemy get pushed aside because you are worshiping. You're in the throne room of grace. So if private worship is not something that you are doing right now, I beg you, do it. Don't let another night go by. Don't let another day go by that you are not worshiping your heavenly father. Let that, let that be job one for you. Let it be that. Praise and worship him all the time. Jamie just cracks me up. She'll come in here singing and praising and worship. <laughs> I'm sure L.A. sees it all the time. That's just what she does. And see, that's what we need to do. Praise and worship him all the time. But Barry, it's going to cut into this. It's going to cut into that. So? So? What's more important to you? Living a life of peace? 
receiving wisdom from the throne room of grace or doing what you normally do. I've made a decision, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm tired of doing what I normally do and living the life that I live. There's more out there than the life that I live. And I'm going to ramp up my, my times of praise and worship. That's where it's going to start for me. Because I have a level of peace, but it is way down here, and the peace I can have is somewhere up there. I want to get up there. You see what I'm saying? Worship will start that. Make a decision that you are going to dramatically increase your time of private worship. And I will tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. If you will do that, when you come here, when you come here, it's just going to be an extension of what you've already been doing. Just an extension. Just an extension. And see, when you get into worship in the corporate, too, and, and, you, and you get to worship it and you get into that flow, things will happen. Trust me. God will be able to do things in your life that you are going to say, oh my gosh, this is what that feels like? Amen. Amen. Everyone, please stand. Pharaoh when he asked Joseph to come in and interpret the dreams, he wanted to know what they meant. But God wanted Pharaoh to know what they meant, but he also wanted Pharaoh to know how to get through it. And see, that's how God is with us. It's not enough for us, for us to know because then, if he does not tell us how to get through it, we will try to figure, out our, figure it out ourselves and make it worse. That's just how we are. Because our own self-interest will kick in and make it worse. But God says, if you will trust me enough, that when Satan is throwing everything at you, take a deep breath, get into my presence and worship me. If you will trust me to do that, then I'm going to give you the wisdom that you'll need. Because I'm trying to give it to you now, but you can't hear it. But if you get into, the, if you get into worshiping me, calm in your mind, the peace that's already in you will start rising up and rising up and rising up. Then you will be able to hear me talking to you. Amen? Praise you, Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We glorify your name, Jesus. We magnify you. You alone are worthy of our praise, Lord. There is none like you, Jesus. We owe you all, Lord Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you. We praise your holy name. We honor you. Praise you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I will worship Your holy name. worship his holy name. Let's, let's make praise and worship just like breathing to us. Make it, a, it's just a natural, normal part of your day. 
you can't take one, two, three steps out. Oh, Lord, I love you. I praise you. I glorify your name, Jesus. And see, I'm not necessarily saying, you know, you, you just you carve out 30 minutes a day of that. That's good to do. But all throughout the day, praise him. Worship him. Let him know, Lord, I know you are here. I know you are in my presence. And I love you, Lord. I glorify you. I magnify you. I praise you, Jesus. I worship you. Yeah, people may look at you, but who cares? You're spending time with your father. You're spending time with your father. You're letting people know, I don't care what you think. This is my time with my father. And that is important to me. And if you hang around me, I can make it important to you. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise and glory. You alone are worthy of our praise, and we thank you for this night. And Father, I just thank you for everyone, the sound of my voice. Father, they could be somewhere else on a Wednesday night. They could be listening by, via the internet, some, something else on a Wednesday night. Or later on, they could be doing something else, but they are choosing to be here with you. So I just thank you, Lord. There is a blessing in obedience, and I just thank you for that. So as we go home tonight, Lord, I just thank you for our nights being restful, sleep being peaceful. And when we wake up in the morning, we have a lot of energy. And the first words out of our, out of our mouth, I love you, Lord. I praise you. I worship you. I glorify you, Jesus. Magnify your name, Jesus. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy, Jesus. There is none like you. I glorify you. I magnify you. That will be our life, Lord. That will be our life. We give you glory and honor. And the church said, amen. If you have an offering, please bring it up. And you guys are blessed. You are blessed. See you on Sunday.